Chinese construction company has pulled off a new engineering feat by building the tallest building in Africa and the third largest mosque in the world. The Great Mosque of Algiers will have a 265 meter high minaret, which can be seen from anywhere in the Algerian capital of Algiers. The project covers 230,000 square meters, making it the third largest in the world after the two holy mosques in Saudi Arabia. Not only will it be an important place for Muslims in Algeria, but it will represent a new peak of engineering and architectural achievements made by the Algerian branch of the China State Construction Engineering Corporation, or CSCEC, in collaboration with architects and workers from other countries. In 2011, the Chinese company beat other international contractors and won the bid for the mosque. How has the Chinese team overcome engineering and cultural challenges involved in building such a project? What would it mean for relations between the peoples of China and Algeria? Joining me from Paris are Zhou Sheng, general manager of CSCC in Algeria, and Boris Chatelard from EGIS Group, an engineering company. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. First of all, uh, Mr. Joe, let me go to you. Exactly, how did your company got involved in this project when you were bidding for this uh, project in 2011? What were your advantages, but what were the challenges? Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's for CSAC. Uh, today, when I, I remember exactly, uh, in October of 2011, it was a moment uh, exciting moments for all the group of CSCC. We won the bidding of the project of Great Mosque in Algiers. Out of all the other 14 international contractors, they are very uh, good contract international contractors. Uh, we outrivaled them because we have uh, 36 years experience of construction in Algeria before that. Mm -hmm. uh, and during that more than 30 years, in the, we have a lot of ex experience of high quality performance of the projects. And the first time, the high quality, and they are, the people and the government, they are satisfied. The Algerian government uh, allocated about uh, one billion pounds, or some say two billion US dollars for this project, and uh, you were only there to build it. What did the budget, what exactly was the budget? What did it mean to you? Was it a lot or was it not so much? How were you able to, um, to stay on this budget and, and create and, and finish this uh, gigantic project? Yeah, even the budget is, uh, it seems a lot for, the, for this project, but it's a challenge for us to, to manage the cost of the project. As you know, as a complex project, you cannot finish all the, all the, the design and engineering at the beginning. All the engineering work will be, uh, will be done along with the execution of the construction. So we have to uh, work together with the architect and the other, all the other participants, our subcontractors and, and the suppliers, to find out always the, technic, the best technique solution to have the good performance of quality, and that is a very engineering process. It's a challenge for us, but uh, we are happy that we have done that with all the team and, and uh, our collaborators. Boris, let me go to you. Tell us a bit about the specialty of this project. I mean, the Aegis Group, I understand, is in charge of supervising this whole project. How special was it for you to supervise such a project? You are right. There is a specific issue managing uh, the, that kind of project with this size and with these uh, specific features. Uh, just to come back a little bit on the features of the project, you mentioned the size of the minaret, you mentioned the size of the, of the global uh, surface, I mean uh, the grid, all the, the, all the court uh, and, and uh, all the, the content of the, of the project. Um, but the, the, the first challenge was on the management. I mean, you are on a site, a construction site, where you have Algerian, Chinese, French, German, people from all countries in the world, nearly, because you have more than 4,000 people on site. So this is first a challenge of, of culture, of understanding each other, of, communica of communication, 
and this is for me th the first thing that was um, that was important to deal with mm -hmm. and what uh, succeed uh, CSUC and edges is to handle this issue first then for the technical issues uh, yes of course you have uh, you have specific uh, point uh, the most important from from my point of view is the seismic uh, aspect uh, the building is not here for 10 years the building shall, shall be there for the history of Algeria so you have to build something that will remain um, standing for for years Mm -hmm. hundreds and, and so on. Let me go to Mr. Joe again. Um, very interesting points here. First of all, how much of a challenge was it for your company to deal with such a project, building the tallest building in Africa, uh, given the seismic act activeness of that uh, area? This is one thing. Secondly, to build a mosque, what kind of experience did you have in the past? Because a mosque is a religious place. There are a lot of religious sensitivity. You have to pay attention to how did you manage that yeah exactly that was uh, a great challenge for all the team of the company and all the participants uh, firstly as uh, Boris said uh, this this project is uh, located in a zone in an active zone of earthquake season so we have to solve that problem so according to the design a uh, conception design it was uh, for the prey hall, it's the whole building is isolated to the uh, to the ground, is separate from the earth, so it can absorb the alert impact mm -hmm. from the earthquake. So during the construction, we have to uh, we have to install all the equipment of the isolators and the dampers with very high uh, accuracy uh, in in one millimeter, two millimeters. That was but according compared to the huge dimension of the building that was uh, a high requirement for the for the wor for the workers and the technicians mm -hmm. in terms of and cultural secondly, yeah in terms of cultural sensitivity how did you address that yeah uh, this because this is a religious building so inside the uh, inside the construction inside the construction there is a lot of decoration pieces elements from uh, uh, we have to do the calligraphy, for example, the patterns uh, and the paintings to integrate into the construction. Even for the calligraphy, for the engravings, there, there are more than 10 kilometers engraving on the stone. And even the, context, the text and the content, we have to decide, we have to discuss with all the, the Ministry of, uh, of Culture and the Ministry of Religious to do together to decide the content and we do engravings later. Mm -hmm. And a lot of technicians and artists are involved in this work together with our Chinese workers to manage them, to put them together to work uh, magnificent work. It's uh, really uh, a hard time and now the result is good. Boris, um, how would you it describe the process of working with uh, the Chinese company and uh, communicating with the Chinese team throughout this project and how, how much confidence do you have that given the complexity and the sensitivity of this whole project that your co cooperation has been up to par can guarantee that this mosque will stand for the next say thousand year to come? With the ability of mobilization of CCC, they, they were able to, to, to choose for every task what is the best uh, worker or the best organization to, to do this. Uh, everything is uh, going quite smooth, quite smooth. Okay. Hopefully, uh, yeah. we, we are happy for, for the time being. Okay. Um, Mr. Joe, let me go back to you. Um, I know you have been in uh, Algeria for the past 30 years and you have undergone a lot of projects. Was this the first time that you built a mosque? Um, how important was it for your company to finish this project with a top-notch performance? Yeah. Uh, yeah, as you said, even we have uh, the company has worked more than 30 years in Algeria. We have uh, uh, built more than 200 projects, but among all the projects, the Great Mosque is the most important one, and this is uh, uh, a milestone for the development for our development in Algeria. Uh, the importance is uh, enormous uh, because this is. Uh, 
you say, you, you know, in Algeria they said, okay, each 1,000th year they will build a great mosque. In the past history, they have two great mosques, very ancient uh, great mosques. But after, after, since the independence of, independence of Algeria from the, uh, uh, from, uh, from the 60s, they haven't built great mosque. So this is uh, uh, a historic mark for all the country and for all the people. So it's, uh, we are really proud of to do that. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, if you talk about Chinese uh, construction work in Africa, uh, the question that many people ask in the West is uh, maybe not so much about safety of the project, but the security, you know, whether Chinese would put uh, um, eavesdropping devices in the wall so that they can uh, listen to what's happening in the buildings and stuff, stuff like that. Mr. Zhou, have you ever had such doubts or suspicions expressed to you? How do you address these questions, these issues? To see for the head office of uh, uh, Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, it was built by us uh, before 10 years, uh, and we have built the uh, head office of the constitutional uh, committee of the country mm -hmm. and other office buildings. Uh, they are all, from the beginning, the government of uh, Algeria they never doubts if there is any uh, problem of security, uh, problem of the intelligence. We don't think about that. They didn't ask that. But actually, after a couple of projects, we, are, we have our performance and our uh, behavior uh, for the construction have make them satisfied and uh, they don't have this doubt. And to today, this is, a, this is not a question, uh, this is not a problem uh, between us. Even a lot of uh, uh, Western media they say there is uh, such a concern, but for us, it's 100% confidence and trust between us, no problem. Okay. Thank you very much. I wish the most uh, grand uh, success and uh, a com successful completion of the project. Many thanks to my two guests, uh, Zhou Sheng, General Manager of uh, CSEC in Algeria, and Boris Chatelar from Aegis Group, an engineering company. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with LX. Download the application for CGTN to watch the show on your mobile devices or go to YouTube and look for CGTN The Point. Thanks for watching. You've got The Point.